Hello. Uh, so this is going to be a pretty different video than I normally make. Um, I told you at uh, the end of my last video, the Suicide Squad one, that I want to take a little bit of a break because I was feeling kind of burnt out. But uh, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm working on scripts right now. But uh, in that time, I've been working a lot more on my comic, Dark Phantom. Issues 1 through 6 are available now for free on Webtoon. Link in the description. You don't even have to pay for these ones. You have no excuse not to read them. Please read them. <laughs> but I've had some complaints about how I've been publishing these comics. And today I'd like to just do a little bit of an unscripted rant at you. And if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, this is not a good example of my videos. <laughs> They're normally scripted, but uh, I'm, just, I'm just full of energy and I don't feel like sitting down and actually writing a script for this video. So I'm just recording it, uh, one take, no script, just ranting. If you know anything about comics, you know that the biggest name in selling digital comics is Comixology. They're owned by Amazon. They're pretty much the most trafficked comic book website out there. They have a huge selection, pretty much every Marvel or DC comic, indie stuff. They have their own subscription service, Comixology Unlimited, where you can get select comics for free. So, when I first started publishing Dark Phantom, I thought, Comixology must be the place to be. That must be the best place to be publishing comics. And they have a submit feature where you can sub obviously submit your own comic to be published. I do not recommend using Comixology at all. Don't, don't do it. I've been considering jumping ship from Comixology for a while now, and let me explain why. Basically, what you have to do on Comixology is you submit your comic, which is fine, and it's not instant. It does not get published instantly. It usually takes a few weeks for the comic to actually get approved, which is, you know, it's not ideal, but it's fine, right? They're not just going to accept anyone. They want to have a curated process. So it's frustrating because you can't just publish your comic immediately. Once you're done with it, you have to wait. But ultimately, I understand. What is less forgivable is that once it gets approved, it will then take a few more weeks, like pretty much doubling the amount of time it will take for your comic to get published. Because they have to do this guided view thing. And if you don't know what guided view is, it basically, instead of reading the comic one page at a time, It'll, you keep tapping your phone or clicking the computer, and it'll go one panel at a time. This is very frustrating because you cannot opt out of Guided View. If you want your comic to be published sooner, tough luck, pal. They have to implement Guided View. You cannot do it yourself. Comixology has to get someone on their staff to implement the Guided View system for you. If you don't want Guided View, you have to have Guided View. And it's even more frustrating because some moments just do not work. Like, it, they, they ruin the timing of some moments. Like, uh, for example, Dark Phantom number 2. There is a moment where, spoilers for Dark Phantom number 2, where Dark Phantom enters a building and sees, is immediately surprised to see these frozen people. It's supposed to be a shocking scene. You just turn the page and bam, there are those people. But Comixology, there's the scene of Rob saying like, oh God. And then instead of immediately zooming out to the frozen people, it zooms into the another dialogue, which is being said by the villain, Glacia, off screen. She's the one who froze the people. Do you see why that moment kind of loses something when it's read in that order? instead of reading Rob's dialogue and simultaneously seeing the frozen people. Because ideally, the frozen people should be the first thing you see. Dark Phantom's reaction should be, uh, you know, the little additional thing, like, what, what is this? And then you see Glacia's dialogue, which propels you into the next page and continues the story. It's just frustrating enough where it's like, it doesn't ruin the comic, but it's like, that's not how I intended it to be read. 
if that makes sense. Now, in Comixology's defense, in their defense, they do have a very good customer service line. Like, I can email them in, like, a couple of hours. I will get a response that perfectly answers my question. They do not jerk you around. It's not like, well, we're going to ask someone about them, and then I'll pass you off to someone else. No, they have very good customer support. And I appreciate that. But it does not... Like, you can't just ask them, hey, I don't want to do guided view, because you have to do guided view. That's non-negotiable. Another inconvenience with Comixology is that you cannot decide when your comic gets published. Once, uh, once you submit it and then it gets approved and their guided view is done, they will send you an email that says when it will be published. You can't change that date. You can't, like, they won't send you a link that's like, select the day you want this comic to be published. It has to be this specific, they, they just choose it for you. You don't, it doesn't, you don't get to schedule it with, for like to go along with an event you may be holding or something like that. It's just, you can't tell your audience when to expect this comic to be published until like, I think it's usually like less than a week before it actually goes out. I think it's just, just a, a day or two. It's been a while since it's happened. Like, I haven't published a comic in a few weeks, so I don't exactly know how much time it is, but it's not a lot. You cannot decide when your comic gets published. That's another huge inconvenience that I wish they would deal with. I understand that they always want it to be published on a Wednesday because that's when new comics typically get, get published in the industry. That's, it's frustrating, but it's fine. I understand that, that restriction. But let me decide which Wednesday. Once it's approved, just send me a calendar that I can click on a when, an upcoming Wednesday and that's when it will be released. Let me choose. Don't pick for me. It's infuriating. So, I've been on YouTube longer than I've been publishing comics. So I've gotten used to YouTube's analytics system. You know, say what you will about YouTube, and I, I've said a few things, but they have a decent analytics system, a very good analytics system. You can tell um, how, much, how, many, how much time people are spending watching your videos, you can tell like exactly you can tell exactly at what point most people will click off your videos so you can maybe try to improve that watch time you can see the search terms people are using to find your videos and your channel comixology has none of that and look it's a smaller company than youtube a much smaller company than youtube i do not expect them to have as perfect an analytic system as this huge Google conglomerate. Like, they may be the biggest name in online digital comics, but even then, digital comics is not a huge industry. But I think they can do better than they're currently doing. Let me tell you what the extent of Comixology's analytics. People can put star ratings on each individual issue of your comic, which is good. You can tell if people are enjoying your comic or not. Not many people have reviewed mine because nobody reads Dark Phantom, but it, it's still a useful tool regardless. And that's about it. Comixology does not alert you every time you make a sale, which, you know, it's frustrating, but maybe that would get annoying if I was actually successful and I would be getting a lot of notifications every day, like, you made a sale, you made a sale, you made a sale, you made a sale. I would be like, okay, I get it after a while. But here's how they do tell you when you make a sale. You have to, at the end of each month, you have to wait halfway through the next month. They will then send you a spreadsheet that tells you how many units you sold and how much money you made. That is it. They don't tell you which comic sold the best. They don't tell you how people found your comic, like what I, it was in an external link on Twitter. Was it just searching on the website? Was it recommended to them by their algorithm? Won't tell you that. Won't tell you which individual comic sold the best. Won't tell you anything except how many units, uh, how many comics you sold, not which ones, and how much money you made. That is not helpful. 
like i mean it's helpful to know how much money i made for like i guess tax reasons even though i'm making like two dollars but i need i'd like to know more than that please i want to know how i can grow i want to know how your website can help me grow my comic outside of just being a place to put it and then i'm on my own from there okay so you may be thinking at this point, Comixology is not a great website for a small creator like me. I'm sure they give priority analytics and stuff like that to DC and Marvel. But for a little guy like me, I'm not their top priority, which is very similar to YouTube now that I think about it. So I decided to go over to another popular webcomic website. That's a tongue twister. Webtoon. Webtoon is a lot more like YouTube. You publish the, the comic and it goes up as soon as you hit publish. Um, you publish, you post it for free. You do not make money unless you have a certain amount of subscribers and uh, views, which will then allow you to make ad revenue. Again, much like YouTube. So I can see why it's a lot more popular for like specifically uh, indie web comics than Comixology would be. And I have enjoyed my experience on Webtoon a lot more. I've noticed that I've been getting a lot more uh, people looking at my comic a lot faster. So I recommend, if you're starting a webcomic, I recommend using Webtoon. However, there are still a lot of frustrations. Mainly that their analytics are also very, very bad. Let me tell you what, what Webtoon will tell you about your comics. They will tell you how many subscribers you have when people like each individual issue, or I guess they're, they're called chapters on Webtoon, I'm not entirely sure about the culture, and then how many individual views the series as a whole has. It will not tell you how many views each chapter has, just the entire series. How does that help me? I want to know which chapters are doing better than the others. Likes don't necessarily help that. I'd like to know, view-wise, how much better each chapter is doing than the other. And then there's comments. Comixology does not have a comment system. I believe they have a review system, I'm not entirely sure, I haven't dove into that. But they do not have a comment system. Webtoon does. However, I have found no way to be notified if someone comments on one of my, one of my issues. So, Anytime I see that it's gotten like a, a little spike in views, I have to like scroll through every comic to get to the comments section just to see if anyone's posted something new so I don't miss some criticism or maybe a compliment, if you want to give me compliments, that someone has left. All in all, Webtoon, I have noticed that I've been getting a lot more people noticing me on webtoon it's probably a better place to grow an audience since you don't have to force people to pay i think in the future i may just stop publishing the comicsology altogether and just go straight to webtoon now there's one more place i've been publishing comics and that's gumroad i usually since comicsology takes so long to publish comics i decided gumroad i would once it gets approved on comicsology but not yet done processing i'll just post it on gumroad because i know that means that this the same version of both comics will be on gumroad and comicsology if that makes sense but just gumroad will get it first because comicsology is frustrating and i like gumroad a lot more now it is not specifically built for comics it's built for like all sorts of online creative stuff like it's kind of like etsy in a way except more for digital stuff, I think. And I mean, it's not anything spectacular either, but at least it tells me like how many sales each individual issue is getting, and it also tells me immediately when I make a sale. So that immediately puts it above Comixology in my book. So to conclude this video, I guess my point is just that there's no perfect place to be publishing comics online, and I don't expect there to be. Like, YouTube is the best place to be posting videos, and it kind of sucks. So, like, I'm not looking for, like, the perfect godlike comic book publishing website. But I think we can do better than what we have. 
Um, if you're if you're an aspiring comic publisher, indie comic publisher, self publisher, I hope this helped. Just maybe it helped a little bit just to uh, weigh your options about what kind of places you can publish to. I've all, I've been doing this for less than a year, so if you're more experienced, please let me know of any other options I might have. Or maybe we'll just make our own. Let's, let's just band together and make our own comic publishing website with, with tags and notifications when you get comments. That'd be nice. Anyway, new scripted video coming soon. Uh, read Dark Phantom on Webtoon or Comixology if you want. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Follow me on Twitter at ClassacJack also. Okay, now I'll see you guys next time.